Have you ever compared yourself to others and quietly wondered, why is mine smaller or bigger than someone else's? You're not alone. For generations, men have silently questioned the size of one of their most personal attributes. But today, we're cutting through the myths, the locker room talk, and the internet nonsense with real science. I'm Dr. Katie, a urological surgeon and sexual health specialist. In this video, I'm not only going to explain what truly determines penis size, genetics, hormones, and even your mother's chromosomes, but I'll show you why your size doesn't define your worth, your strength, or your masculinity. This is more than a lecture. It's an empowering journey through biology, self-awareness, and confidence. So if you've ever looked in the mirror and questioned what's normal, stay with me. Because today, you're going to understand your body in a way nobody ever taught you. And trust me, it's going to change how you see yourself. Okay, so why do some men naturally have larger penises while others have smaller ones? Is it solely a matter of genetics? Or are there additional factors at play during development? Let's begin with what the research says. Genetics plays the dominant role in determining penis size. Similar to how your height, eye color, and facial structure are inherited, approximately 70 to 80% of penile growth potential is encoded in your DNA. Multiple studies, including those published in the Journal of Urology and Nature Reviews Urology, support this hereditary influence. For example, a large 2015 systematic review published in the British Journal of Urology International concluded that penis length and girth are significantly governed by genetic makeup. If that's so, the real question is. So why then do brothers who share the same set of parents sometimes end up with very different penis sizes? The answer lies in a combination of genetic variability and prenatal hormonal regulation. Remember, Every person inherits two sex chromosomes, one from each parent. If you're genetically male, you receive an X chromosome from your mother and a Y chromosome from your father. This XY arrangement is what triggers the development of male sexual characteristics. Interestingly, emerging research now shows that the X chromosome from your mother plays a significant role in determining penile size, not just the presence of the Y chromosome. Because mothers carry two X chromosomes, each containing potentially different genetic expressions, it's entirely possible for one son to receive a variant that supports more robust penile development while another does not. It's a matter of random genetic recombination. And no, it's not anyone's fault. It's just nature's course. But genetics is only the foundation. Hormonal activity during specific developmental windows also plays a vital role. If we talk about penile development, it begins early, in fetal life between weeks 8 and 18. During this critical phase, a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin from the placenta signals the fetal testes to produce testosterone and another compound known as dihydrotestosterone, DHT. DHT binds to androgen receptors in the genital tubercle, shaping it into what eventually becomes the penis. The amount and timing of exposure to these hormones dictate the rate and extent of early penile growth. Studies show that around 70% of the final adult penile length is influenced by this prenatal androgen exposure. A high concentration of testosterone and DHT during this window typically leads to greater growth, while lower levels can result in a more modest outcome. Unfortunately, this window is highly sensitive to disruption. Certain environmental exposures such as endocrine-disrupting chemicals like BPA and phthalates, commonly found in plastics, can interfere with testosterone signaling during fetal development. Such exposures may reduce testosterone output or inhibit receptor activity, possibly leading to underdevelopment. Disruptions in the placenta, responsible for nutrient delivery, can also cause insufficient hormonal signals to reach the fetus at the right time, impacting growth not just of the penis, but other organs as well. That's just the first phase. The second critical phase for penal growth occurs after birth. Around day seven to 10 of life, the body initiates a mini puberty, a temporary surge in testosterone that peaks between two to three months and then slowly declines by six months. 
During this time, the penis can grow several additional centimeters. This phase is often overlooked, but is essential for ensuring foundational development. Then comes puberty, the final surge of testosterone production in adolescence. This is when boys experience the most pronounced development of their reproductive anatomy. Testosterone floods the system, triggering not only penile growth, but also testicular enlargement, hair growth, and voice deepening. This pubertal growth period varies in timing and intensity. Boys who experience early or naturally higher testosterone levels during puberty may develop relatively larger genitals, while others with delayed or milder puberty may see limited changes. Another hormonal factor to consider is human growth hormone, HGH, which works alongside testosterone to influence body composition and organ growth. Males with growth hormone deficiencies may exhibit reduced penile size, even if testosterone levels are normal. Conversely, optimal HGH levels during growth years can enhance development overall, including genital tissues. It's also important to debunk some of the widespread myths. For instance, no amount of stretching exercises, over-the-counter pills, or penis pumps will permanently increase size. Legitimate medical literature consistently supports that real growth occurs only under the influence of internal hormones and only during growth windows, fetal life, infancy, and puberty. Once puberty is complete, further growth is minimal to none. So if you've ever wondered why your size might not match someone else's, there's no need for shame, guilt, or wishful thinking. The reality is, this aspect of your anatomy was largely determined long before you were even born. Nearly every aspect of it is governed by genetic blueprints and critical hormonal phases that are mostly outside of your control. And for those who feel insecure, let me emphasize, size does not determine function, fertility, or satisfaction. Numerous psychological and clinical studies have proven that traits like confidence, emotional connection, erectile function, and communication skills are far better predictors of sexual fulfillment than raw anatomical dimensions. So, instead of worrying about what you can't control, focus on what you can. Strengthen your relationships, take care of your health, engage in open conversations with your partner, and understand your body with confidence, not comparison. And if ever in doubt, speak to a qualified urologist or endocrinologist. There are legitimate medical approaches for anyone experiencing true developmental conditions, such as micropenis, delayed puberty, or hormonal imbalances. Remember, being informed and proactive is far more powerful than being misled by myths or marketing schemes. If you found today's insight valuable, I encourage you to stay connected. Subscribe for more science-based discussions about men's health, sexual wellness, and understanding your body from the inside out. Because on this channel, we tackle tough questions with honesty, empathy, and science. I'm Dr. Katie, and I'm here to help you reclaim control, not just over your body, but also your sense of self, through knowledge that heals, not harms. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.